It's umsum time. Why do flowers smell so good? Simple. Because they want to impress me. Oh, <laughs> umsum. To buy umsum merchandise, visit umsum.com. <laughs> the fragrance of flowers isn't really intended for us. It is intended to attract insects, which can transfer the pollen from one flower to another in order to fertilize them. Hmm. Some flowers use wind, while others attract insects for pollination. Hmm. Now, as per a recent research, flowers tend to emit fragrances during specific times of the day when the insects which pollinate them are active. Also, the fragrance is specifically aimed at attracting those insects which pollinate them. Hmm. Flowers for whom moths are primary pollinators emit more fragrance at night, whereas flowers for whom bees and butterflies are the primary pollinators emit more fragrance during daytime. Hmm. Also, some flowers like the corpse flower emit foul-smelling fragrance in order to attract carnivorous insects, which generally feed on dead flesh. Hmm. Why can't we smell and taste when we have a cold? Because we become lazy. Nah. Our nose has specialized olfactory receptors covered in a thin layer of mucus. Oh. In normal conditions, the odorants ah. released from food or perfume diffuse through the mucus and get transported to the receptors, activating them and thus allowing us to smell. However, when we have a cold, our nose produces excess oh. mucus. Hence, the odorants are unable to reach the receptors, thus making it difficult to smell. Mm -hmm. But ah. why can't we even taste? When we chew food, specialized gustatory receptors in our tongue tell us whether the food is sweet or salty. However, at the same time, odorants from food travel from back of our mouth to the olfactory receptors. Ah. The combination of information from gustatory and olfactory receptors give us the sense of overall flavor. However, uh -huh. when we have a cold, as the olfactory receptors cannot detect the odors, we don't get a complete mm -hmm. sense of taste and flavor. Why do old books smell so good? Because <laughs> books secretly apply perfume. No. Oh. Smell of old books is basically because of paper and ink in those <laughs> books. Paper is primarily made up of wood. Wood is made up of organic compounds like cellulose and lignin. Over the years, these compounds react to heat, light, and moisture and begin oh. to break down, releasing VOCs. VOCs means vanilla orange cakes, right? Nah. VOCs stand for volatile organic compounds. These compounds easily vaporize and mix in the air, thus forming the smell of old books. Now, there are different types of VOCs. A volatile organic compound called vanillin gives vanilla-like smell. Another VOC, benzaldehyde, gives almond-like smell. Ethylbenzene gives a sweet smell. In short, the combination of various compounds makes old books smell so good. Mm. <laughs> hmm. How can huh? we smell things? Dude, I don't have a nose, so how will I know? <laughs> At the back of our nose, there's a tissue called olfactory epithelium. It is covered with <laughs> mucus. This tissue has specialized neurons called olfactory receptor neurons. There are about 40 million olfactory receptor neurons. These neurons are oh. chemoreceptors, that is, neurons which detect chemicals. Wow, they have a cool name. Now, when any substance releases its smell or odor, the odor consists of chemicals. When we breathe in, these chemicals enter our nose. When they reach the olfactory epithelium, the chemicals get stuck in the mucus, causing them to activate oh. the neurons. Hmm. As a result, these activated neurons send signals through the olfactory tract to the brain, informing it about the smell. <laughs> Topic, rain. Huh? Why does rain smell? Maybe it applies a special perfume. Nah. Rain is just water and water doesn't have any smell. Yeah, dude. So what's that smell? Huh? The distinctive smell which frequently accompanies the first rain after a dry weather is scientifically called petrichor. It basically comes from plants and bacteria <laughs> called actinomycetes, which live in the soil. 
Now, during a long dry spell, the plants release oils into the soil to block other seeds from germinating, thus reducing competition for water. Oh. Whereas, the actinomycetes produce a chemical called geosmin. Now, when rain hits the ground, it brings up the oils and geosmin, which then mix with air. The combination of this geosmin along with the plant oils form the smell which we receive oh. after the rain. Topic, diffusion. <laughs> Why can we smell the hot food from a distance? Huh? Hey, looks like you have lost your way. No, I know the way. Fine, don't listen. <laughs> huh? <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> now listen to me. Huh? There is a restaurant next to your house where hot sizzling food is available. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yummy. Follow its smell and you will reach oh. home. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> Yippee! I have reached home! Do you know how the smell of that food mm. reached you? Mm. When food gets cooked, <laughs> it releases some huh? aromatic gases into the air. The molecules of these gases spread ah. and mix with air molecules. <laughs> when this air reaches our nose, we get the smell of food. <sighs> This process of spreading and mixing of a substance with another substance is called diffusion. But then, why couldn't I smell the food inside my house from a distance? This is because that food had become cold. Hmm. On heating huh? food, the molecules of its aromatic gases oh. gain kinetic energy and start vibrating faster. They spread and mix easily into air, leading to an increased rate oh. of diffusion. Hmm. As the food gets cold, the temperature of the aromatic gases oh. decreases. The kinetic energy of molecules decreases and they do not <laughs> vibrate as much anymore. Hmm. Thus, the rate of diffusion decreases and we cannot smell the food from a distance. Hmm. <laughs> Topic, human nose. Why do we get <laughs> nosebleeds? I don't know. All right, I'll explain. The medical term for a nosebleed is epistaxis. The most common epistaxis is anterior epistaxis where bleeding happens from the front part of our nostrils. Each of our nostrils has a mass of blood vessels called chysalbox plexus, which oh. is very close to the skin surface. Hmm. Now, usually the mucus moisturizes the skin in our nose thus protecting the blood vessels in it. Wow, mucus is so useful. Yes, it is. However, during winter, the air is dry. Hence, when we inhale this dry air, it draws moisture from the mucus, which in turn leads to the drying of skin in our nose. Hmm. Now, some people's skin is oh. very sensitive. Hmm. If it dries, the skin and blood vessels in it get easily damaged, causing an anterior epistaxis or nosebleed. Oh. Hmm. Why does our nose run? Because huh? it wants to defeat huh? Usain Bolt. No. Huh? We can get a runny nose due to common cold, <laughs> flu, allergies, sinus <gasps> infection, etc. But let's first see what we actually mean by a runny hmm. nose. Our nose consists of a mucous membrane which secretes a slimy substance called mucus. However, sometimes, this membrane produces excess mucus which comes out of our nostrils, thus causing a condition called rhinorrhea, popularly known as runny huh? nose. Hmm? But why is our body producing mucus in the first place? Mm -hmm. For protection, mucus contains mucins which give mucus its gel-like properties helping it trap germs, dust, etc., and thus preventing them from entering our body. Mucus also contains antibodies and immune cells, which kill germs and other foreign particles. Besides this, mucus even warms and moisturizes the inhaled air, thus preventing our breathing passage from getting damaged. Hmm. Topic, human nose. <laughs> Why does spicy food make your nose run? Because it is not that strong to make me run. <laughs> nah. Huh? 
Our nose consists of tiny hair and a sticky substance called mucus. Can I use this mucus to stick my broken vase? <laughs> Ooh, gross. Huh? Please don't do that mm. and listen. During breathing, the hair and mucus trap harmful substances, thus prohibiting them from entering deep inside the body. <laughs> huh? Now, spicy food items like chili, mustard, horseradish, and wasabi contain chemicals called capsaicin and allyl isothiocyanate. <laughs> when we eat such food items, the capsaicin and allyl isothiocyanate travel through the pharynx and reach our nose. Here, the chemicals activate the heat-sensing receptors, thus causing inflammation in our nose and irritation of the mucus. <laughs> Hence, as a defense mechanism, more mucus is produced in our nose mm. to get rid of these chemicals, thus making our nose run. 